This is my 2018 ZL1 1LE Camaro, and next month will be three years of ownership with this car, and I absolutely hate driving it. So I guess I need to rephrase the whole, I hate driving this car because I only hate driving this car on the street. And that's why in my three years of ownership, I've only racked up about 2,300 miles on this car. And most of the time it's sitting in the garage on the trailer ready for the next event but even if it wasn't stuck on the trailer, I really still don't think I would drive it that much because the suspension is so stiff and hard that it is pretty brutal driving it on the street. You've got no magnetic ride suspension like a normal ZL1 would have where you can put it in tour mode, have a nice soft compliant ride, put it in track mode and have a nice stiff ride. You're just on stiff all the time. There's no cool button to hit to soften it up. You're just stiff all the time. This was Chevy's kind of um, trying to make up for the fifth gen Z28 Camaro. When it came out in 2015, it was a hardened, stripped track car. You could option no radio, no air conditioning, and that's all you got. You got a stripped interior, you've got one speaker for the chimes, and it was a hard race car. No cooled seats, no heated seats. It was just a race car. And it didn't sell very well. Um, of course, you had the early adopters that wanted to have that Z28 name in their garage. But once those initial buyers bought the car, um, they sat on dealer lots for a really long time. So when they came out with the 6th gen ZL11 LE, they left all the cool fluffy stuff in the interior. You've got the heated seats, the cooled seats, heated steering wheel, everything you'd want in a luxury, sporty performance car. But the one thing they couldn't change was the ride. The springs shocks are DSSV, dual spool valve, and they are very firm on the street. Every expansion joint in the road you feel, and a lot of times it will throw you out of the seat and hit your head on the ceiling. Uh, a lot of the bushings on this car have been removed and replaced with real solid aluminum bushings. So there's just not a lot of give in these cars. And that translates to an extremely rough ride. But where this thing really shines is the track. It makes you look like a track day hero out there with very little driver input, very little skill. It just works really well. The GM engineers knew what they were doing and delivered on a exceptionally performing car. Even though these are big heavy pigs at 3,800 pounds, the thing works outrageously well. Since the suspension, the steering, and everything is so tight, it just makes the car feel light, nimble, everything you'd want in a modern track car. One of its good party tricks, on the street at least, is merging onto the highway. Let me show you here. Just like that, we're up to 60 miles an hour. I know those other cars kind of going by, they're probably going a little bit slow for the speed limit. This thing accelerates extremely well. 
The 6.2 liter LT4 motor makes 650 horse, 650 torque, and you feel it. But on the road, on these side streets, some of these bumps and dips will buck you around. And the view out of your rear view mirror is completely chopped in half with that big spoiler. I find myself looking in the rear view mirror, trying to look up and around that spoiler to tell if it's a cop in your mirror or if it's just somebody driving behind you because it is exactly where it needs to be for you to not be able to see what's behind you. But in my three years of ownership, the car has needed nothing other than routine maintenance, oil changes. I've changed the transmission fluid a couple of times and the rear axle fluid a couple of times just because it sees so much track use. Because these 2,300 miles, 90% of them have been autocross or track days. We've got two local tracks within two hours of us and the car spends quite a bit of time getting thrashed around both both of the tracks. Another feature of a factory track car is the road noise. Probably doesn't pick up very good in videos, but with all of those solid bushings and solid mounts, you hear everything off the road. Of course, if the car was on an all season tire, it would probably be a lot more quiet, but with it being on stiff, track tires it is extremely loud you hear everything and here we've got a little bit of a rough road and you feel every single crack and crevice on this road so guys we'll do another pull here just to let you see this thing's party tricks we have no traction but if you can believe it that was 40 miles an hour you get up to speed really quickly in this car and now we're back to the bouncing suspension down the roads trick that you get very used to in this car and most of the time you're out of your seat while driving this thing it's also really hard to deny this car's street presence the look this car has from the front is menacing and mean with all of the arrow and splitters that when this thing's coming up behind you in the mirror, you know it means business. Guys, even with all of this car's shortcomings on the street, the fact that you can go out to a racetrack and set extremely respectable times with very little skill makes this thing so so good they didn't make it to be a street car they didn't make it to be a grand touring car it was made to go around the track as quick as it could for as little as possible this thing price wise competes with cars that are two and three times the value these are a absolute bargain for somebody looking to get into a fast track day car for the performance you get, you can't touch these cars. Tires, a little bit of money, but other than that, they require very little to turn key, go around a racetrack at a high rate of speed. So even though I hate driving this car, would I buy this again after three years of ownership? Absolutely. It turns heads with all of its big aero, big spoiler in the back looks great and performs even better and there's no denying that exhaust sounds really really good so guys thanks for watching and hopefully you'll see this thing on the track in front of you not behind you thanks again